Welcome to this overview of Design Builder, where for the next half hour or so I'll take you through the key features of the software. Design Builder is a state of the art software tool for checking building energy, carbon, lighting and comfort performance. It's been developed to simplify the process of building modelling and simulation for maximum productivity allowing you to rapidly compare the function and performance of building designs and deliver results quickly and easily. Design Builder also has an integrated CFD package to enable you to undertake highly detailed analysis of temperature and air flows in the building using the same model. Here you see the standard Design Builder user interface. On the left we have the navigation panel, in the centre we have the edit screen which is where we create the model geometry, we input the model data and we also specify the data for our calculations and simulation. To the right we have the info panel which is an intelligent and interactive feature providing information and options relevant to the current activity. So for example here before we've entered any data or geometry in the edit screen we have the option to input our 2D drawing file and this could be a number of different formats from DXF, PDF through to various bitmap options or we can input our 3D CAD model or add a block. I'll now minimise the info panel so that we've got the maximum size of screen to work with while I demonstrate the modelling process. So I'll now show you how easily and quickly we can model a building in Design Builder by drawing a U-shaped building with a semicircular entrance. So starting by adding a block and retaining all the default drawing options here, I simply left, clean, uh, left click at, uh, an arbitrary point in the edit screen and move the cursor in the required direction. You'll notice that it snaps to the axes. I then just type in the required dimensions, move the cursor along the next axis and again type in and enter the dimensions. I then work my way around the model typing in my lengths. I'll now change the line type to an arc just to quickly create a semicircular entrance and then back to a polygon and using the drawing guides and endpoint snaps I can very quickly create a ground floor block. At the top of the screen here we have our view controls so we've got a dynamic orbit function that will allow us to rotate the, the model in 3D we can zoom, pan, zoom into an area of particular interest or simply fit the model back to the screen. We can also uh, choose any orientation so we can set the model to plan view or front back or the, the standard 3D axonometric view. By selecting our model we bring our drawing tools in the toolbar into play. So here we can see we have the drag face tool and by selecting a face it allows us to drag that face along an axis. We can also cut our block, move it, clone or copy it, rotate, stretch or delete it. There are two ways of creating a roof block and the first one I'll show you is to use the pitched roof form of building block and I'll leave the drawing option set to default so I simply click on a start point and then trace round my ground floor block using the end point snaps and when I click back onto my start point the roof is automatically produced to the geometry detail set in the drawing options there I'll delete that block for now and show you the second way of producing the, uh, the roo either roof or first floor geometry. I'll now create my, my first floor 
So I'll draw a flat roof section in the centre here and then at either end of the building I'll produce a sloping roof. So to add my centre block is just a straight rectangular extruded block using the snap point and the drawing guide to locate my points and I'll now use a construction line to help me locate the top point at a height of 6 meters and again using the add block function I'll create an extruded block which this time I'll manually extrude backwards and using an existing snap point I'll ensure that the the east wall is flush with the existing rear facade. So now to create the mirror image of this block at this end of the building I could either copy and rotate the block that I've just created here or in this case what I'll do is I'll add a separate block at a height of 6 meters and then I'll select and cut that block using the drawing tools and simply delete the top section that I don't require one of Design Builder's great strengths is the ease with which you can create complex geometry. And a good example of this is a dormer window, which I'll create now. I'll start by using construction lines just to locate the endpoints of the, the dormer. And I'll just zoom into the, the area of interest here. So I'll use an outline block to create an outline of the dormer roof and I'll then convert that into a standard building block so I extrude that all the way back through select it and then I'll cut the outline block along the plane of the existing roof so that we get an accurate cut line and then delete the rear section and simply select the outline block and convert it to a building block and that's how easy we can create some fairly complex geometry I'll just delete that now and remove the construction line. The final stage in creating our geometry is to zone up the blocks. So I'll, I'll give you a quick demonstration here of how we do it in Design Builder. Which is essentially we, we use partitions and we draw partitions like so in the relevant areas to simply and quickly create our zones and I'll call that my reception. And I can see there the internal partition walls. We can also use the visualize tab at the bottom of the screen here to produce a rendered image of the building at any stage during the modeling process and this enables us to zoom in and look internally at the building look externally to check that we've got the, the correct constructions um, assigned to the, the various different facades it also gives us some uh, useful visual images of the effects of shadowing at different times during the year now that we've completed the, the model geometry we can start to look at the data entry aspects. 
To maximise productivity, design builders configured so that you only need to enter data by exception. One example of this is the intelligent adjacency assignment method that it uses. So for example, we don't need to specify that these are external walls or that's a flat roof or this is a sloping roof with an occupied space below. It already knows that and it will assign the internal and external adjacency conditions uh, accordingly which saves an awful lot of data entry and time. Going to site level in the location tab, this is where we specify uh, or select the location template which brings with it the weather data for the site. Um, for the UK alone there are around 160 different templates and we have about 2,500 worldwide. We also have around 4,500 design data templates for locations worldwide and loading the correct template will then bring with it the site location details and critically the simulation weather data. I'll now briefly review each data entry tab in turn to show how quickly and easily model data is input in Design Builder. So starting with the activity tab we can see at the top we have a template and we can open up this larger screen which gives us the full range of templates that we can select from. We can very easily select them by just double clicking there should we want to. Or we can go to the info panel and change it back. Loading an activity template brings with it all of the data that you see below by default. So it will set for example the occupancy density, the environmental control conditions such as heating and cooling set points, uh, natural ventilation and mechanical ventilation set points and also at the bottom here we have the uh, the internal gains from equipment so you can see here it's set to 15. We can change any of this data very simply by clicking on and dragging the slider or alternatively just left, left clicking at the correct value. The Activity templates also bring with them the schedules uh, and these dictate when the various parameters within the activity tab become active. So they'll dictate for example when the office starts to become occupied on what days of the week and at what times and what the percentage occupancy is throughout the day uh, according to the, the activity profile. So all of our activities we'll assume in our building are open office except for our reception zone and we can change that very simply by clicking on it and then going to the info data. If I go back to the actual activity template and just double clicking on the reception there. Another one of Design Builder's productivity features is the hierarchical data inheritance method. What this means is that data that's loaded at uh, the top level or building level is automatically inherited in the blocks and zones below unless we change it at any of those levels. So if we'd have changed the, uh, the activity template at block level then both the reception and zone would inherit that unless we changed it then at zone level. I'll now move on to the construction tab which is where we specify the opaque fabric elements of the building such as our external walls, our roofs, internal partitions and floors. This is also where we specify the infiltration. Uh, again we start at the, the top of the, uh, the tab with a template and again we can select anything from uh, the 
dialog box here simply by double clicking or applying like so and that will then change all of the the relevant constructions below it all the sub constructions we can copy or modify any of the existing data very easily and I can either add a completely new external wall or copy the existing one which is selected here and then open that up and edit it and we can see here we can specify the number of layers and the, the properties of each of those layers so in this case I'll change the uh, the, ex the insulation type and I'll load a foil faced PIR and I'll change that to 100 millimeters and once I've made that change I can view an image of my construction using the uh, the tab here which is a, a useful way of checking the data you've input and I can also view the U values that we've achieved with the um, the actual construction that we specified so here we can see with no thermal bridging uh, we have a U value of 0.173 and with bridging 0.173 so we could actually go back to our layer there and specify some thermal bridging um, we can select there if we go to the metals and select a stainless steel and let's say quite high but we'll use 0.1 percent bridging and then if we go back to our tab we can see that this had a marked impact on the U value of that construction. We also have a really useful uh, tool here which is the, the U value calculator and we can actually set the U value that we want to achieve and then um, use this tool to change the, uh, the actual th thickness of the insulation layer to meet the U value that we've specified. So if I now click OK and if I go back and I'm at building level and I will select my revised and that that wall construction now will apply to all walls as I've loaded it at building level and we can use the same process to change the data of any of the roofs or floors or as I said create new constructions as we wish. The openings tab is where we specify all the glazed elements of the building fabric. Starting at the top again we have the, the template which we can select simply by highlighting the appropriate one from again the, the large uh, library of data that we have available to us and pressing the tick icon to apply that data. That then brings with it all of the, the relevant parameters in the, um, in the headers below. As with the construction data we can apply as many different window types to as many different surfaces as we wish that are relevant to our particular building. There are two ways of specifying the amount of glazing in the building the first one is the, the early design method if you like and that is simply to specify the percentage of glazing window to wall percent and as I showed you before we can move the slider by dragging it or simply click on the appropriate value on the slider bar here we can see it's set to 30% as a default so I may want to go to my reception zone for example and I could either move that to 100% or use this option to fill my surfaces and going back to the layout tab going to building level we can see that the glazing along this whole west facade has been filled to a hundred percent 
we can also manually draw glazing onto a surface so if I set this surface to, to no glazing and then use the toolbar icon I can simply draw a window let's say 2 by 3 by simply typing in 2 space 3 and pressing enter and then if I go back to my building I can see I've made that change and we can do that on as many different surfaces as we wish. In the lighting tab we have again the template at the top so I can select the Part L2 2006 template and there again this brings with it the uh, all of the associated data so it's giving us a, a lighting energy consumption of at the minute 3.4 watts per meter squared per 100 lux we could of course change this if we'd like we can also change any of the other elements so we might wish to change it from suspended to surface mounted fittings and again that will change the, uh, the radiant and visible fractions and associated data at the bottom of the lighting tab we have the lighting control option which is switched on uh, and this enables us to specify the, any parameters uh, that are relevant in terms of a daylighting control strategy so we can set the control type to linear, linear, oblique, off or stepped um, and we also have the, the option to specify two separate lighting areas uh, which is very useful where we may have a large zone and we have to apply some kind of uh, zoning protocol to the daylighting control. Finally we have the HVAC tab which is where we specify all of the heating, ventilation and air conditioning uh, system details. I'll leave the fan coil system template loaded and quickly review the headers below. So here we can see we have mechanical ventilation system details uh, this may be a recirculation only system so I can switch off mechanical ventilation or on whatever's relevant I can also switch off any of the other parameters that don't apply to my particular model so here we've got the heating system where we can specify any of a number of different fuel types uh, we can also change the efficiency very easily if we wish and the same with the cooling system we also have the domestic hot water details here and we have a number of different types of system that we can select from and at the bottom of the HVAC tab we have the natural ventilation header which is where we apply natural ventilation data if that's relevant to our model so now that we've created all of our model geometry and input all of our model data we're in a position to start running our calculations and simulations I'll start by running the heating design calculation which is a steady state calculation undertaken at winter design conditions based on the weather file which is uh, set by the, the location that we specified earlier in the process so at the top of the screen we have the internal design conditions and external design condition and the graph below that shows us the heat balance uh, so we've got a steady state uh, zone sensible heating load of 37.4 kilowatts and then we've got losses and gains as shown by the, the various bars in the graph here so we've got a loss of 11.5 kilowatts from the glazing and the, the big one here we've got a loss of 19.5 kilowatts from infiltration that may prompt us to look at possibly improving the, graze, uh, the glazing um, but more likely to maybe consider uh, improving our uh, leakage rates by possibly incorporating accredited details into our construction process below the graphs we've got a numerical breakdown of the uh, the losses and gains from the various uh, elements of, of building fabric. We can view this data for building block or individual zone level so we can we can analyze it as we as we wish. 
There's also a very useful summary tab here which gives us the, uh, the breakdown of comfort temperature in each of our, our zones and blocks uh, and the steady state heat loss and design capacities in each of the zones and blocks. Uh, so we can see that we have uh, a design capacity which is essentially the, the steady state heat loss multiplied by a design factor that we input into the, uh, into the model earlier and that gives us uh, our design heat loss for each of the zones. From that we can, um, we can specify our emitter sizes and at the very top we've got the sum of all of the losses and from that we can specify our plant heat size to meet the heating load. We can of course use this data throughout the modelling process iteratively so that we, we ensure that we, uh, we iterate to the optimum solution in terms of fabric performance and cost um, by running the calculation at, at various stages, for example as we're deciding the insulation level in the walls. The next tool available to us is the cooling design which again is carried out at uh, design conditions but this time summer uh, design conditions again based on the, the weather file uh, from the location template that we, uh, we selected at the beginning of the design process. The data is presented in a slightly different uh, graphical format so we can see at the bottom we've got our latent loads and our system um, sensible and cooling loads and the top graph gives us a breakdown of the heat balance so we can see here that we've got a peak uh, zone cooling load of uh, just over 60 kilowatts and then this is broken down into lighting which is fairly low we've got our occupancy which you can see follows the occupancy profile and then we've got a steady state uh, computer and equipment gain but the, the dominant um, heat gain is from the, the solar gain through the exterior windows as you can see here. Now that graph is at building level um, and quite often with this data it's, uh, it's instructive and intuitive to, to look at the, what's happening in the individual zones. So, so looking at the graphs from our reception which you'll remember is, uh, has a west facing facade and I set the glazing to 100%. So the solar gains are relatively low in the morning. They creep up as the diffuse radiation increases in the day. And then during the afternoon, as you get some direct sunlight onto that west-facing facade, we can see that the, uh, the gains through that glazing peak massively. So this, uh, this clearly dominates the, the other gains in that zone and would lead us to maybe reducing the amount of glazing or uh, ch maybe changing the glazing type to solar control glazing or possibly introducing some form of um, external shading. As with the, the heating design calculation we also have the summary data here which gives us a breakdown of our internal temperatures and sensible and latent cooling loads which would enable us to size our uh, emitters within the condition zones and then also would give us our plant size at building level. Having run the heating and cooling design calculations I'll now run a dynamic simulation over the summer design week. This takes a little longer than the, uh, than the design calculations one of the reasons being that it has to actually run those calculations first before it carries out the, the dynamic simulation which obviously then includes uh, more detailed analysis of the energy flows into and out of the building and also the effects of shadowing and any other variables that have been introduced into the simulation uh, request.
So here we can see the, the first of a, a number of different graphical outputs that we have available to us and essentially it's uh, a similar screenshot to we saw on the cooling design where we've got the cooling loads at the bottom and uh, and then the, the heat loads that balance that at the top and again we can see that for our reception area the gains are dominated by the, the solar gain through the windows. Staying at zone level we can also look at the comfort temperature distribution in the zone so through the year it will calculate for or through the, the assessment period obviously I've only looked at the design summer week here but we can run this calculation for a year if we wish um, and it will give us the number of hours at or above or the number of hours at or at or below uh, each of the temperature bands um, which can be quite useful and is uh, may be required for your submission to building control now moving to building level and we'll have a look at some of the annual data that's available to us so we might want to look at the total fuel consumption um, you can see here that it's, uh, it's just one figure and that's for electricity because it's, uh, it's a summer calculation so there's no heating fuel um, we may then want to look at the breakdown of that um, we can see here that we've got some room electricity, lighting, miscellaneous, chiller and domestic hot water and this is a really useful graph uh, it enables us to quantify any changes made to our building or system in terms of fuel so if you're doing a renovation project for example you may want to do a simulation before and after and you can quantify the savings in terms of both fuel and CO2 should you wish. We can also display the results as a grid or the graph with a table below with the, the quantitative figures in which is actually quite useful. We can also very quickly and easily export results in a variety of formats. So you can see here we can export to file, so that may be a graphic as in this case, or if we're displaying the data as, as table, we can export to an Excel spreadsheet to enable us to do uh, to manipulate or, or work on the data in other ways. We can also print, send to the clipboard or generate an internal report topic and what that does is it enables us to build up a picture within Design Builder of the various iterations as we go through the model so at each stage we export to a report topic and then we can quickly show the client how we iterated to the final solution. As well as enabling us to do dynamic simulation Design Builder also provides an interface to local energy code or national energy code calculation engines and in the UK that is SBEM and I can simply change the analysis mode which will then enable me to run a calculation in that code I now set the assessment type to the required function and press OK and here I'll produce the Building Regulations UK Part L compliance document for the building and in the same way I can also run a calculation to produce the Energy Performance Certificate. Thanks for listening and we hope you've enjoyed this overview. If you'd like any more detailed information there are a number of tutorials which are freely available on the Design Builder website